for him. And I'd ask you to put your hands together and let's wish, wish, wish each and every driver a safe and successful 25 lap journey. An impressive sight under lights as the drivers make their way up the home straightaway, ready for the sprint car main event. OK, welcome along to Parramatta City Raceway. We're getting ready now for the main event sprint cars. Wayne Gardner on pole position in car number 99. Brett Loadsman on the outside. And your back markers, Gary Rushbrook, Tatnell and Skip Jackson. Time to get the pedal to the metal. Here we go. Gardner leads them across the line. Dips down into the bottom corner. Goes in there about mid-track. And gets it a little sideways. Trevor Shields goes off back behind them and is fighting his way back onto the track. Almost got Darvel in the, in the thick of things. Gardner drops back one spot, and Robbie Farr's not going to waste any time. He gets down the inside of him, halfway down the straight. Gardner goes wide that time. That left Gary Rush out of room, and he hangs Rush out to dry. <laughs> now Johnny Shaw comes back on the inside. Skip Jackson and Brooke Tatnell. Tatnell down on the inside of Scott Hurrigan. They get their way through, and Stephen Gall is punching down the inside, but we've got the amber lights on already because Chris Orr has gone into the bottom turn and got it around sideways, and he will go to the rear of the field. How would you like to be Gardner? <laughs> Talk about under assault on two laps. They came at him from every direction. Spot. Wayne's going to slip up there. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, they didn't pass him on the last lap. Or did they? Maybe Wayne thinks it's a complete restart. No harm in that, son. They'll get him straightened out. As long as they've told him they actually restart the races on the back straight. He's going to be mildly disappointed when he's running 19th. Stephen Gall told to move up. All right, we'll just let them sort this one out. You like being in a taxi with the throttle jammed open and set at a Bronwyn Bishop driving. <laughs> So, uh, Brett Loadsman, car number 11, will lead them away for the restart. Kraft is uh, second. Third, of course, is Robert Farr. And back in fourth, Wayne Gardner. Behind him, Gary Rush. And Rushy will be up very smartly to try and get a, uh, a shot down the outside. I think they were telling Jackson to slip in behind... behind uh John Shaw. But he was trying to and Brooke Tatnell Brooke just moved him straight up the racetrack. Yeah, they're happy with the front running set up. Although, still be pretty frantic. I think Gary Rush will want to dispatch Wayne Gardner in the opening corner if he can. I bet you Gary Rush is around the outside of Wayne Gardner and on the tail of Peter Kraft in one lap. As Mike was saying, let's hope Wayne Gardner's been told about the start in the back straightaway. Brett Lode's been about to stick on the pace. There he goes. Gary Rush goes as well as they come to the home straightaway the first time. The feature race resumes with 24 laps to go, and it's Gary Rush fielding all. Oh, look at this. John Shaw gets caught up. In goes Scott Hurrigan. Oh, there's 96 going through with his wing in disarray. Hurrigan is the driver, I believe, upside down. Well, he's quite OK. Wayne Gardner just throws his hands up and says, what the hell's all this about? I was just driving, and you've jumped up on the wheels, and... Yeah, Bruce White's car it had the wing around sideways even before the start, so it was going nowhere. And all they need to do is get the Hurrigan car back, uh, I believe, on uh, four wheels. And you've got uh, John Shaw perched up here on the top of uh, the 90.4. Um, it looks like the Hurrigan car coming back onto uh, four wheels. Actually, Hurrigan went through on the inside, I think, and cl clipped uh, Wayne Gardner's uh, inside front and then uh, just dribbled over uh, onto its side. And Manif, main event winner at Newcastle last weekend. Ready for the restart, and Brett Loadsman gets honking as they head down into the top turn. Rush is going to try and get them all here on the outside. Gawley goes the inside, but actually will almost lose a spot. Into the bottom turn, Loadsman tries to turn it halfway through the corner. It's a dust bowl to the outside, and there's not much down on the inside, as Max Dumsley pointed out. But Rushy, right around the field as he comes down the front straightaway, zeroing in here. Now decides whether he'll stick to the low side of Robert Farr. Farr's car sits there and buzzes wheels, and Stephen Gall gets up on the inside of Brett Loadsman as they come through the back straightaway. Race leader is Peter Kraft, but we've had one go to Gowings. That was Stephen Horn. 
And you can see pavement, actually, almost in turn number one. You can see that black sheen across the racetrack. It's only now starting to develop. Oh, two wheels up in the air. Kraft gets onto it, had to back off a little bit. Here comes Rush on the outside. He will be in second as they cross the line. And Brooke Tatnell will be in fifth, just passing Stephen Gall as they go to the first corner. To the back straightaway, and Rush is putting in the big move. He wants to get in front now. Kraft is in front of him. All oh, spins in the top turn. He's out of harm's way. I hope they're not going to have another light situation. No, they let the race run. Gary Rush is your race leader. Kraft almost takes the tail of the two car as he goes through turn one. Two cars going backwards. A third joins in. Into the wall goes, uh, it looks like Justin Maneef. I hope it wasn't Wayne. No, it was Justin Maneef. And uh, we're having a, an incident-filled main event tonight. 22 laps to go now. Peter Kraft to lead away. So they come down the back straight, now onto the front straight with uh, Peter Kraft, Robert Farr, Gary Rush. See where Brooke Tatnell runs now because they'll start them on the back straight. We're keeping an eye and hopefully needs another restart. So Crafty to lead away, but still Justin Maneef, who slapped the wall down there in the bottom turn. He's been able to... Uh, to get running again, although the car doesn't seem to want to start, and he's going back to the pits. It's good to see Justin have a, a strong weekend. Um, a third here in the main, and up to Newcastle, and he won his first main. Yeah, Justin's doing quite a good job for a newcomer. He's, he's going to get up there. Um, actually, in this race, I was just looking, and Brooks, a quiet achiever, he's sneaking up there. Like, this type of racetrack, I'd say he's going to be right in there with the hunt. Like, Gary seems to be able to get the jumps on the start, but I don't think we're real Brook out right yet. So Brook a chance for a top three, and uh, they'll have the one to go signal this time around. Peter Kraft is your race leader. He leads onto the front straight, and running in second is Robert Farr. He's been a bit of a quiet achiever tonight. He's been uh, there solid all evening. Rushy is there and very competitive with a very strong end. Bottom. So that'll probably who that comes out in front, I would say. Yeah. Now, it all depends if Crafty, he's got them stacked up behind the mill. And he'll make sure they're all stacked up. So uh, that's exactly what he does. Rushy makes a big run here on Robert Farr as they come out of the turn. Now, Rushy's forced to go inside into the bottom corner. That's where he should be, too. Robert Farr and Rush just tap uh, wheels as they move on to the back straightaway. Brook comes out of that running in fourth spot. And Bobby Tunks up on the inside of Darvel takes fifth. That's about the order. They're all working the high side through turns three and four, and it's straight to the pole in turn number one. Yeah, Brooks having a little trouble keeping it down there on one and one and two because I don't think he's got enough to quite, quite enough tyre stagger on it, and it seems to be running his car mid-track coming off, which really doesn't allow you to hang in there. Oops, a daze. It pushed the front end or something <laughs> on Crafty's car, so he had to turn right and go the other side of Loadsman. At that time, Rushy went through to take the lead, but now he's going to have to go back behind him again. Yep. He he's he, did the right thing there. Yeah, he certainly did. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> like the Sydney Opera House. OK, watch uh, Crafty. He'll just keep them down to a mild uh, and very sedate pace down here. Rushy's getting ready for the big loop around the outside, and Brooks trying to get under uh, Robert uh, Farr, which he half does coming off the corner, so that'll put him in good shape for the next turn. They barrel into turn number one. Uh, John Shaw has gone very, very wide indeed. Didn't lose too much ground to Bobby Tunks, and Skip Jackson has probably been the big mover from the back of the field. Down the front straightaway, Kraft, who drives a slick track pretty well. Old Grizzly doing a fair job there on the inside. Would it be to a stage now if you've got that much horsepower and you can't get it down, Max, and you could buzz it? It sure would be. You've got to be very gentle on the throttle coming off. Um, Crafty's really doing well because he's only got a small engine in tonight they were telling me earlier and, and plus he's got a car that's very hooked up and it seems to be good for him right now. Look at Skip Jackson on the outside. He's made a couple of moves. He looks good for a while and then he drops back three. Yeah, he got hung up there a little bit just then. Okay, Rushy now just setting him up for an inside pass. If he can get him on the inside out of here, but uh, actually Kraft is very quick through turns of one and two. Yeah, he, he seems to be able to keep it down there really well and comes off just in the right place. He, he has his wheels here. Whoa. And we've Whoa. had them go into the bottom corner. Graham Donning, I think it was, got all out of shape. Oh, and there's Rushy Whoa. there, banging away down the inside. But 
I think Kraft Kraft is in trouble now. Yes, he is. Unless Kraft can get through here and he throws Rush out of it. Yep. And he did that well. Make no sure mistake did. about that. Oh. Now to the outside. This is where he could get hung out to dry. Yeah, I think so. No, he's got it again. Kraft, he's got enough. And look at Brooke Tatnell trying to get a slice of the action. Now, Rush has got to get Kraft set up on the inside into the next turn. Now, Kraft hangs low coming down the front straightaway. He's doing a super job, but I'd say right now he's starting to get tired. <laughs> Takes him about that long. A little bit of pressure, you believe. Yeah. Now, Rush, he might... The track had a little line around it there before. Now it doesn't. Down the front straightaway, Gary uh, just eases down a little bit. There's nothing out there really to play with, and you'll see Kraft may get uh, out of the turn. That's about the same gap, so there was nothing ventured, nothing gained there. But Kraft won't know where Rush is coming from next. He'll be outside of him, he'll be inside of him, he'll be listening to the engine one side of him, and then and they come out of the corner. That might be somewhere else. Brooke if Tatnell, I don't think he's got enough to go on with this. Oh, if Gary keeps playing on the outside there, I think he'll get a surprise in a minute. Like, well, they're both up there playing Brooks, sneaking up right there. Now, the frustration, of course, is for some of them, uh, rather than peg away on the inside and just stay there, some of them become a little adventurous and then go wobbling around the outside. Now, here's Wayne Gardner about to be lapped by uh, Peter Kraft. Look out. Kraft is taking a wide one. <laughs> a very <laughs> wide one, and Whoa. that's allowed Rushy up the inside, but Kraft tries to shut the option off and get down the inside. Straight up there, Crafty. And look at Brooke Tatnell on the outside. Here comes Tatnell on the outside yep. of Rush. Whoa. <laughs> Not enough room, or is there? He hauls it in there. Yep. Gary Can he hang on to the outside groove? They're side Ooh. by side, and Rush is thinking, what the hell's going on here? I should be able to pass this guy, and here comes uh, Anthony Orr again. <laughs> Crafty down the inside of him. Now it's uh, Gary moving up. I think Gary get a little more business-like about it from here. He knows Tatnell's behind him. Trouble is, there's not a great deal of uh, other places to run except where Crafty is, and he seems to be really quick off the turns. They come down to another lap car, that's Trevor Shields, and Crafty just plying his trade so beautifully here tonight. The car, as Max said, set up perfectly. Gee, he's gone in here just a touch. I know he's riding the rim as he comes off once again back to the inside. Gary and Brooke are probably getting pretty frustrated right now. Yep. He really needed a bit of traffic. The traffic paid off well last time for him. Come around the uh, the top bend. Halfway down the front straightaway, Darvel goes to the inside, but Crafty's able just Good. to steer in there and yep. add the brakes and get out of there. Now he's got six laps to go and probably starting to feel the pressure a bit more. They come down the front straightaway. Rushy going to have a bit of a lurch here down the outside. Has he got enough to go on with it? Kraft gets no. through the turn, but Rush will be faster out of the turn. No, he's not. And they're coming up. They've got a lap to put on Bobby Tunk shortly with five laps to go. They'll have four laps this time. You're watching a guy drive to the track conditions. That's Peter Kraft, and Rushy is casting it out and around. He might pull off one of these shortly. As they come down the back straight, a little whoops down the inside for Peter Kraft. Just backs it off a little bit, gets the car straight now. Doing a super job. Super job. He really has done a fabulous job. He just seems to be able to turn the car, stick it on the bottom, and then drive it off wherever he wants. If you watch down here in three and four, whereas Gary and Brooke are running off on the high line and, and getting a good shot off there, um, Peter seems to be able to drive off mid-track or anywhere he likes and, and run with them. They don't seem to be able to do anything with him. It's Peter will we'll see the white flag and say, well, I won't do anything too much this lap, and Gary will go balls out and <laughs> probably pull it off. It'll be an interesting four-lap sprint. Where'd the field go? Yes. Now, these are the ones that are still intact. Now, Crafty says, right, this will do me. Now, look at Robert Farr around the outside again of uh, Brooke Tatnell. Whoa. And Gary loses the start badly there as Crafty gets it into the bottom corner. Brooke's going to start a big, high, wide, and handsome thing. Picks up the front wheel, but Kraft really actually... Wide. Not Kraft, I mean, to Farr passes him. Look at Peter Kraft. He's absolutely <laughs> nowhere near the horsepower of anyone else, but it's all down on the racetrack and going well. Into the bottom turn, three laps, two laps the next time round. Brooks still working the high line, but is going backwards, and Rushy is easing off the pace. Just streaking away. He's doing a super job. Look at him. Just go. OK, uh, two laps to go as they sweep into the bottom corner. Gary Rush using the high line this time, and John Shaw is going to bring the flag out with a spin in the bottom turn. Somehow that doesn't seem fair, I guess, because Peter Kraft, I guess you could say, is almost uh, bound for victory here tonight. 
And I think Gary might find himself under a bit of pressure from uh, Robert Farr. Yeah, young Robert, he's, he's pretty good little pedalist when it comes to some of these slick tracks. He, he certainly doesn't ever back off, that's for sure. And the good thing is that uh, there's no way uh, Peter Kraft has been... Cause this will probably be the second time this season that Gary Rush has run out of gas. I had a, uh, a guy that... Um, crewed for Doug Wolfgang say to me once he said you know I've never ran out of fuel with too much I've lost a race for having too much fuel but he says <laughs> I've lost some with, without enough yeah he says never hurts to put just a little bit too much in well they're going to try and fire it again but uh, Gary of course led a main event here into the last lap of a race and actually the thing coughed on the back straightaway and he lost the main event he finished third wonder if they let him take fuel on under a yellow I don't think he'd have enough time. So help. Gary Rush is out of gas. That's what we presume. Sure looks that way. That he was shaking the car around, trying to get whatever was left in the tank. So Peter Kraft, Robert Farr has driven Peter Chance for fifth. Yes. The attrition rate's not been good, not uh, down to five. Now, can the youngster, Robert Farr, work over the veteran Peter Kraft? They've got two laps to go. And now Brooke Tatnell works away on the inside of Robert Farr. I don't think anyone's got a chance at the way the Crafty's car's going. Just see it come off turn four, the way the car just straightens up and goes. Like most cars, the tail hangs and it doesn't take off. Just watch it when it comes off here. It just straightens and then it rockets. Well, as a guy who's been trying to win a main event here for a while, Peter Kraft takes the white flag. He's going to do it in flying colours. Yes, too. he's driven this brilliantly. The other two are still battling for second and third, halfway down the back straight away. He's a regular. He's driven with his hand. He turned 40 this week. Let's hear it for Peter Kraft. He wins the main. Common Sense wins tonight. Second spot goes to Robert yeah. Farr. Very good drive to Robert Farr. And Brooke Tatnell, who was always there and prepared to try something different. Bobby Tunks finishes in fourth, and Craig Darber will say, I finished fifth. Well, Bob would have to be very happy with that, to finish and finish up near the front. Well, it at least gives him a finishing uh, position, and that sure is better than uh, taking it home with uh, the engine with a couple of uh, rods hanging out the side of it, and that's the sort of luck he's had uh, this year. Put your hands together, ladies and gentlemen. A guy who's deserved a main event. He has a very quick motor car. He doesn't have all the horsepower of some of those uh, those other guys but he won that through sheer driving ability tonight by using his uh, his melon no ladies and gentlemen i'd also like you to welcome and put your hands together for the sponsor of tonight's event and a guy and a company who do a hell of a lot for pcr mr don steen from steen's plant hire Brooke, as I said, it did take a long time to get on the road, but once we got on the road, there was a lot of action. Oh, it did take a long time. I looked up the board after about 15 minutes, and I thought, 22 laps to go. I thought, that can't be right. Must have done 22 laps. But uh, third place, well, we'll take anything these days as long as we get to the finish line. The boys have been working a lot of hours into the car and getting no rewards for it. Um, I just hope our luck's about to change. <laughs> even though it is at the wrong end of the season as long as we can try and pull Skip in and pass him again but I'd like to thank Don Steen Excavations for their support I'd like to thank the best oil company in the world and that's Shell and without them we wouldn't be able to be here they've been a long time supporter of Tatna Racing and they're still supporting us um, I'd like to thank all the guys on the crew and Dad and all you great people for coming out and watching Brooke Tatna ladies and gentlemen third place in tonight's main event also, apart from trophies, Don and Dave Steen are handing out gift vouchers to first, second and third. We'll give Don our second place trophy. And the guy came from the clouds. Ladies and gentlemen, they call him Bass Robbie Farr. Bass, congratulations, mate. I said you came from the clouds with... Uh, with about five laps remaining, it was either going to be Crafty, Rashi, or Brooke, and all of a sudden you've appeared from nowhere. Yeah, we're there early. We got there early pretty quick, and then we had a bit of a lapse mid-race and a bit of luck near the end, and it all come off good. Tell you what, uh, second place is a lot more luck than you've been having in previous weeks. Yeah, we've had, we haven't had the best of seasons, but uh, we haven't ran here all that, all that much this season, so it's good to get a good place in here. And certainly in such a prestigious event, second, uh, well, 
It's not too far off first because Crafty did drive one heck of a race. Yeah, Pete drove a really good race and he deserved it more than anyone. And um, I'd just like to thank Donstein Plan Hire and uh, my own sponsors, uh, KBT and uh, Service Powder County. Thanks. Robbie Farr, ladies and gentlemen. And first place in tonight's Steen's Plant Hire Sprint Car 25 lap main event. He was 40 yesterday, Mr. Peter Kraft. Don, I'm quite sure you'll have a few words for Peter anyway. Yeah, thank you, Andy. Peter and all those that were in the race tonight, it was a wonderful, been a wonderful evening right through. And I congratulate Peter on being the winner tonight for the Donstein Trophy, the, the main event. Uh, it's been a marvellous thing. While I'm, I'm here, I'd like to say what the Parramatta City Raceway means to the community, the local community around Parramatta. The, the management of the Parramatta City race, Raceway, I believe, does a wonderful job in presenting this thing for you, the family that can come here and witness a marvellous lot of entertainment. That's why Donstein Plant Hire, and you've heard our name over the radio and television this last week, we contribute a little bit, but not as much as these people do. They, they run the thing, they manage it, they take all the risks, and that's why Donstein Plant Hire have decided to go in with these people and do the little bit we can. It's only a little bit, believe me, compared with what these other people do. And it's all for the, the community of the Parramatta District and others that travel so far for family events. And that's what this life's all about and we should encourage. And I'd like to congratulate the Parramatta City Raceway for what they're doing and keep it up. We'll be with you. Thanks, Andy. Don, congratulations. Crafty over here. Happy birthday, sunshine, and what a way to celebrate. Yeah, it's not a bad birthday present, I guess. I'd just like to thank Don Steen for the uh, lovely trophy and promotion of the Speedway for, uh, tonight. The Parramatta City Raceway for giving us a great track. And the crowd. The crowd's unbelievable tonight. Without you people, we wouldn't be able to race. So thank you all for coming. Scott McNaughton for selling me a McCreary tonight and said this is the tyre that will win the feature race. And I laughed at him, so I've got to get out and thank him. So Scott McNaughton tyres. Billy Roberts, who works very hard on the car today. My brother Richard and Craft Differentials. Thank you. Peter Craft, ladies and gentlemen, the winner of tonight's Sprint Car Main Event.